Thank you for remaining standing. We will have the reading. It comes from one of the Gospels, the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, it's chapter 12, verses 46 through 50. While he was still speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers were standing outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, look, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. But the one to whom he had told this, Jesus replied, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And pointing to the disciples, he, pointed, he, he said to them, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whomever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You'll be seated. Well, as you've heard, today is World Communion Sunday. Historically, it's observed on the first Sunday of October, and it has held extra special meaning for me over the years. Just think about it. World Communion. Conceivably today, all Christians all around the world in all denominations are experiencing the holy sacrament of communion in the same day. The same Holy Communion that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ instituted and proclaimed, do this in remembrance of me. And today it's being done all around the world. On this day, we as Christians use communion to become that tie that binds this one day, we put aside our theological differences and we celebrate that Jesus Christ died for us, giving his body to be broken and his blood to be shed. Jesus became for us that day the Passover lamb, sacrificed on our behalf so that no other sacrifices would ever have to be made on the altar of God. They would never be necessary again because Jesus gave his life for the forgiveness of all of our sins forever. Today, as no other day, I feel that we as Christians are united around the world proclaiming the power and majesty of Jesus Christ to transform the world. And today, as no other day, I feel deeply connected to my brothers and sisters all around the world and in all denominations through communion through the holy breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. What does communion mean to you? What significance has it had in your life or at different points in your life? Just like our understanding of Bible stories and parables of Jesus, just as they grow and deepen every time we read them, I hope and pray that each time we take communion, Something new clicks. A new word or phrase in the liturgy moves us in a different way. We hear it in a different way. We experience God in a different way. So this morning, I'd like to share a few of my communion experiences in hopes to connect with yours, in hopes to connect with the ones that are tucked inside your heart and to help you re-experience those moments of communion. Now, I don't remember my first communion. In the Catholic Church, at age seven, people take first communion, and it's a really big deal, like confirmation is in the Methodist Church. My first real memories of communion began when I was in high school at Lawton, First United Methodist Church. It seems that every church I've ever attended or served as a pastor since does communion differently. My high school church had those little square chiclets that were on the little brass plates, and they were placed every three feet on the altar rail with all of the cups already in the altar rail. Now, after our pastor would um, consecrate the elements and tell us it was time for us to be able to partake, 
we would all stand and get in line down the aisles and just come to the rail when we were ready. And once an opening was made, you could come and kneel and pray. That time, once a month, obviously the first Sunday of every month, that time once a month was so formative to me in high school. I would come and kneel, and I would have communion, and there's something about kneeling and praying that moves me differently. I probably would kneel there for 25 minutes. I might have been one of the first, because we sat in the front row, and one of the last. It was so formative. And also the words that I kept hearing every month were, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. You know how high school students need that word of assurance and love. Let's jump for a moment to church camp. I was a young adult straight out of college. I'd been asked to lead the evening worship services at our district camp for middle schoolers. The last night of camp, we always had communion. And we really wanted to make a big impact in these young teenagers' lives. A friend of mine shared a very creative idea that would make a huge impact and it also made a huge mess. Here's what we did. Instead of breaking the Hawaiian bread and giving them a little pinch, we took a huge chunk and gave to them. We gave each and every adult and youth a big chunk of Jesus. And our message was two things. One, when we come for communion, are we satisfied by only taking a little bit of Jesus with us? Or do we really want a huge chunk of Jesus in our lives? Now remember, these are junior high students who still think extremely literally. And this made sense to them. They got it. 110%. It made sense. They wanted a big hunk of Jesus in their lives. Not just a little bitty teeny weeny piece of Jesus that just won't make much of a difference. We want a hunk of Jesus in our lives. They got it that night. Now the second part of our message was that we have to share that Jesus with others. We have to share that hunk of Jesus. They have to give it away. This is where it got messy. They're supposed to go and share that hunk of Jesus. So now remember, you still have a hunk and somebody's coming up to you, you're giving them a piece and they're giving you a piece. So now you've got 15 little pieces of Jesus in one hand touched by 15 different people and a hunk of Jesus in this hand you're still trying to give away. Yeah, you can cringe your nose at that one. But let me tell you, after 15 or 20 minutes of sharing their Jesus, they got it. They relished in the fact that it was a joy to share Jesus with others. They got the message. We can't keep Jesus to ourselves. Now let's jump to 2014. I was senior pastor at Mullins United Methodist Church and we took a group on a mission trip to Zambia. This was the third trip that Mullins had taken to the same village in Africa. They had built relationships over the years with the chief of that particular village, with his family and the entire community. Our goal for this trip was to check back in with our brothers and our sisters, whom the others on the trip knew by name. We were working specifically with the Sechabea school that served 14 surrounding villages. Our work with Sechabea was to help raise funds to send back to the village so that they could go purchase the supplies and employ the village people to be able to build their own school. On the Sunday that we were in Zambia, we attended the local Methodist church 
all the teachers that we had been working with and all the friends that would join us every night around the campfire to sing and dance. They were all there. It was a great celebration. And even the chief's, the village chief's wife was baptized that morning. In good Methodist fashion, toward the end of the worship service, we took communion. Now picture a rectangular hut with square holes for windows, but no glass, a thatched roof and a dirt floor. Picture logs for pews and colorful fabric tacked up over the windows to keep the mosquitoes out. Picture an extremely simple altar made of plywood. Now, rather than the tiny plastic cups for juice, they had 12 or 15 only squatty bowls. They were about this round and about this deep. The pastor would gather 12 or 15 of us in a circle at the front of the worship space, and we each took one of those plastic squatty bowls and a piece of cracker. Now the tray came to me. I picked up my bowl of juice and put it in my hand, and as I passed the tray to the next person, I began to feel the juice dripping from a crack in the bowl into my hand. And here's what I thought. Here's what went through my heart and my mind. Communion, my friends, is messy. Accepting Jesus into our life every day is messy. It would have been so much easier for me to have stayed in Memphis, Tennessee that summer with my eight-year-old and my five-year-old and my husband. Instead, I traveled halfway around the world for the first time in my life to be with people I had never met. Now, yes, my life was enriched and my world was literally expanded. My heart was so opened, so wide, it hurt. And I get the cracked communion bowl and it's dripping in my hand. Communion is messy. The things we do for Jesus, they are not always easy. And yet, day in and day out, we are reminded that life is really messy for Jesus and that it is exactly why we celebrate communion. Nothing was clean about Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Communion should be messy to remind us of exactly how Jesus died out of love for each and every one of us. I have one more communion story. This one ties all of them together. I take you back to my home church in Lawton, Oklahoma. I was a high school kid again. It was a Monday, Thursday evening. I was a junior or a senior. Our pastor had recreated the upper room experience. Reverend Gilbert Brothers set up two eight-foot tables in front of the altar rails, one on either side. He had a chalice and a loaf of bread on each table. And he invited us to come to each table and try, he said, to come in groups of 13, representing Jesus and the 12 disciples. Then one person picked up the cup and the bread, and they served it to their friend standing on their left, who then took the cup and the bread and served their friend on the left. It was a powerful experience, both being able to be served and then to serve. After we had all been served, we said a short prayer in our circle, and then we were dismissed. Remember, I like praying at the altar, so I went to the altar and knelt. I wasn't there very long when I felt multiple hands on my shoulders. I was floored. I'd come alone that night. So who could this be? Well, you know I had to look. It was my good friend Kelly, and her mom, and her dad, and her little brother, who was my brother's best friend. This family had come to the altar rail to pray for me 
and be my family in Christ that very night. This family was surrounding me with a love and care that overwhelmed me. You see, my dad, he hardly ever went to church with us. And yet here was a whole family coming together and surrounding me and enfolded me into their family through communion and prayer. Family of God, I contend. I contend that Jesus came into this world for many reasons, and one of those was to unite the whole world as the family of God. We in this room are a family brought together by the one true living God who created each and every one of us uniquely and yet created us also in God's image. Jesus came to unite the whole world as one body, the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 10, 17 says, because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Communion and baptism are sacraments. They are an outward and a visible sign of a work that God is doing and churning inside of each and every one of us. And as a means of grace, I contend that in taking communion, we are changed. We have moments and encounters with God. It's in the rehearing of the liturgy We are reminded, as I was every single month in high school, that this is the blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. In the rehearing and the hearing, it finally breaks through that I, you, and we are truly forgiven. An offering and taking a hunk of Jesus at church camp. We all understood the importance of a profound way that we truly desire to have as much of Jesus in our lives as possible. And then we can't, we cannot, there's no way we can keep it to ourselves. We have to share it. We have to share that forgiveness, that unconditional love, that hope, and that grace. And halfway around the world, In the midst of living for four days with no electricity or running water, communion reminded me of the messiness of ministry, of life, and of Jesus' sacrifice for all of us. And that living for Jesus, well, that was worth every single mess I might get into. And sometimes, every time, Communion reminds us that we are all connected as family by virtue of being God's children and vital members of the body of Christ. And on this World Communion Sunday, we remember that we are connected around the world by the same Christ whom we lift up in praise today. So today, as we celebrate Holy Communion, May you allow the words to permeate your spirit in a new way. May you tap into the memories of how God has met you at the altar rail, met you in the act of taking communion. And may you always know that you are forgiven, you are loved, and you are a vital part of the family of God. Amen and amen.